dawn of every new age demands new solutions. In Vision of the Future, we explore new solutions to surviving and succeeding in the 2020s as we talk with some of Japan's top business leaders. This program is produced in collaboration with the Nikkei newspaper. This time, we're featuring this company executive. Twenty twenty two is finally here. I imagine this will be a year of rebooting from the pandemic. What kind of year do you hope twenty twenty two will be? In real terms, we saw big changes over the past year, not just because of the pandemic. One is that decarbonization is speeding up. Renewable energy is another term that we're hearing more of now. The question now is, what we plan to make of this year? How do we grow? How do we move forward? These are the key issues for us. At the same time, the new cabinet has talked of growth and distribution. In recent years, the Japanese economy has certainly seen share prices increase and is poised for growth. However, incomes as well as CPI have not risen. I believe this year we need to address what we as a company can do and pursue initiatives that can be a catalyst to solving these issues. Japan faces various problems. How to nurture people is one. The development of human resources is a major issue. I understand your company established the Future Value Co-Creation Center in October of 2021. Yes. Our company founder, Nobuo Ishibashi, constantly spoke about the importance of nurturing people. What I have here is actually a record of a discussion between Nobuo Ishibashi and the director of the Sakai plant in March of 1962. In it is a section titled, Our Corporate Creed. There are many things written in it, but it talks of developing people through business. It says, industry faces a severe situation today, so much so that today's success may be tomorrow's failure. Business is managed by people. The success or failure of our company hinges on how our 1,500 employees manage the company. The second point that's written is, management of the company is directly linked to the living environment of employees. What that means is employees must eat food and drink. Problems in the home or financial issues should not be brought into the company. Let's move forward with our heads held high. That's the first and second points. This corporate creed is still alive in the company today. This led to the Future Value Co-Creation Center. In this philosophy, has been treasured by our employees for a long time. But we want to apply it widely, encompassing local children in Nara, people of various genders and diverse people. We're very much looking forward to realizing this. Developing employees has long been a part of your company's DNA. Is there anything special or characteristic about how human resource development is carried out? Yes. Students who've graduated technical high schools join our company and attend vocational schools for two years. They don't work or go out into the field for two years, but are encouraged to concentrate on their education for two years. We provide the funds and offer dormitory boarding. We're working with the fifth class of students now. But students in the inaugural class and the second class have acquired second-class architect qualifications and have achieved solid results. There were some who had difficulty graduating, but everyone helped to teach them so that they could successfully graduate. That's interesting. Naturally, there are those who want to quit, but the others around them offer support to help them graduate. The classes are small. We started with five to ten students. They developed a very strong bond, and they're in the architectural field now. But we believe they'll expand into other fields, like electrical engineering, and we're very much looking forward to seeing how they develop. You mentioned in the beginning that a very important theme 
is the issue faced by companies in addressing environmental problems. Yes, in 2009, we established an environmental energy division to work on issues such as reducing electricity costs and incorporating solar energy. I believe we worked on this faster than many rivals. The electricity that our group uses is generated in-house. If usage is 100 percent, we can generate about 130 percent. But because it's a business, of that 130 percent, 120 percent is sold externally. In terms of self-use, it's still about 10 percent. We're aiming to reach 100 percent by 2040, but have been speeding up our initiatives to bring that timeline forward a bit. I understand that idea is becoming quite widespread, even among the homes you build and sell. I believe so. We have a product called Zechi, and we want to fully equip homes with solar panels. We also have Zechi M, and believe we need to carry that out for rental condominiums and other multifamily properties. We want to do this as quickly as we can. There's a phrase, recurrent education, that's being talked about now. It's about lifelong learning. Do you yourself have a theme which you want to keep studying? I love history, the significance of history, the significance behind words, thinking about what words to use in what situation. I want to delve into the study of how the world changed because of words. They say history repeats itself. In a certain sense, a slight miscalculation could lead to failure. And by the same token, making proper decisions could lead to continued success. I would like to study such key words hidden within history. From the perspective of society in general, how would you like the younger generation to engage in study? Currently, I'm the chairman of Kedanren's Committee on Labor Legislation and studying the issue of side jobs. Personally, I believe people should do different side jobs when they're young. Changing the field you work in and learning other things is very important. In my case, in particular, I changed companies. I can see the good things about this company and aspects where more effort is needed. I know very well what was wonderful about my previous company, as well as what was lacking. So, once relevant regulations in the labor environment are established, I'm hoping people can go out and test their skills in other fields. I want to say to young people, don't think about what comes later. For instance, you might think, what's going to happen if I take a leave of absence now? You don't do it because you think about what would happen when you return. At my previous company, I took a leave of absence for 60 days and just went to the U.S. to study. Is that so? I searched for places to study on my own, bought a plane ticket on my own, told my company I wanted time off, and just went. I figured I can worry about whether I still had a place in the company when I return. I was about 27 years old. But that experience became an advantage when I came to this company and was put in charge of the overseas business. The language skills I acquired and the places I visited finally paid off. I went to New York to study. I was finally able to apply changes I experienced then. You don't know when that experience will come in handy. You just don't know. But what you learn will definitely propel you forward in various situations. Finally, would you give our viewers a question? We established the Future Value Co-Creation Center as a place to study. I want to ask you, what do you want to study in this new year? Please send us your views and comments on the question posed in this program.